Coming up tonight on YCN News, a gasoline tax increase will take effect in New Hampshire on July 1st. A crash on I-91 near Putney, Vermont closes the north and southbound lanes of the highway for several hours. And New Hampshire and Vermont prepare to implement legislation to make it illegal to drive using a handheld electronic device. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening and welcome to this Tuesday edition of YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. A gasoline tax increase is now the law in New Hampshire now that Governor Maggie Hassan signed Senate Bill 367 into law. New Hampshire remains one of the New England states with the lowest state gasoline tax. The law takes effect on July 1st. The bill met approval from both sides of the legislature. This marks the first increase on the gasoline's tax in 18 years. The four cent increase per gallon will be used to complete funding for the widening of I-93 with two of the four cents earmarked for this ongoing project. As important, the remaining two cents will go toward repairing roads in the state's rural areas, including Sullivan and Merrimack counties. Governor Hassan said today's signing marks a major step forward by the state in its investment in road, bridge and highway repair. Business and hospitality associations also supported the bill. Better roads mean workers and visitors can experience more comfortable commutes. With warmer temperatures comes another season, no, not spring. The asphalt plants are opening again, the key ingredient needed to repave roads. Consider it a necessary inconvenience rather than an evil. For Claremont residents or motorists coming into and out of the city on Wednesday, paving is scheduled in the Draper's Corner intersection, weather permitting. Expect lane closures and minor detours, city officials say. Seek alternative routes. Draper's Corner is near the end of its major reconstruction over the last year. The corner is where several streets come together, including Maple Avenue and West Pleasant Street, leading southward to Route 12 in Charlestown. A crash this morning on I-91 near Putney, Vermont, closed the north and southbound lanes of the highway for several hours. Michael J. Frazier was the driver of a tractor trailer that collided with a guardrail on the River Road South Bridge of I-91. There is no word yet on any injuries suffered by the driver of the tractor trailer that crashed and caught on fire, but police report that Frazier did not appear to be under the influence of alcohol or drugs. What is known is that the traffic in that stretch of the interstate coming into and out of Brattleboro, Vermont and near Keene, New Hampshire was backed up for an extended period of time. Diesel fuel was spilled across the northbound travel lanes as a result of the crash. Troopers and highway crews worked to open up the southbound lane of the traffic to keep cars and trucks moving and avoiding gridlock. Anyone with more information about this crash is asked to call Trooper Dan Bennett at 802 254-2382. YCN News will update this story as more information becomes available. If you have an orthopedic issue, turn to Dr. James M. Murphy, a board-certified orthopedic surgeon at New London Hospital. Working in collaboration with Concord Orthopedics, Dr. Murphy evaluates and treats hand, elbow, shoulder, knee, hip, and ankle fractures and pediatric injuries. New London Hospital is in your neighborhood, providing primary and specialized services in its state-of-the-art facility. To learn about our services and our compassionate doctors, visit newlondonhospital.org. New London Hospital, your prescription for living well. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Turning again to Southern Vermont, voters in Bellows Falls approved a $1.8 million budget on Monday, the Eagle Times reports. Town manager Chip Stearns says the budget will increase about $32,000 over the current fiscal budget, yet with more properties on the tax rolls, the tax rate will decrease by $0.04 cents per $100 of assessed value. 
Lastly, whether you are driving through Vermont or New Hampshire, you may want to check your cell phone. That's because both states are preparing to implement legislation that makes it illegal to drive using a handheld electronic device, including a cell phone. VPR reports Governor Peter Shumlin earlier this month dropped his reluctance to sign the bill into law. Shumlin said of distracted driving that you can't legislate common sense. Yet on October 1st, the new law takes effect. Look for a summertime campaign reminding motorists of the new law. On a brighter note, if caught breaking this law, fines will be given out, yet no points, which could make auto insurance premiums higher for the offending driver. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Connecticut River, Governor Maggie Hassan is expected to sign into law a handheld cell phone ban in that state, New Hampshire Public Radio reports. If the law is signed, which the House approved a week ago, it would take effect next summer on July 1, 2015. The New Hampshire bill would ban drivers from making or receiving a cell phone call, even if stuck in traffic or stopped at a red light. Nor would texting or searching the Internet be allowed. YCN News will report further on House Bill 1360. What do you buy for 50 cents these days? A soda? A pack of gum? How about a week's worth of your local news in the Kearsarge Sunapee region? I like to see my friends in the Intertown Record! I like to know what sales are going on and I can get the local news that I can't find in a statewide paper. In addition to reading the Intertown Record, I can also access their website from anywhere. I like to know what my town officials are up to, that's why I read the paper. So what can you buy for 50 cents? A what? Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Now Matt McDonald will have a look at our weather for the next few days and then move on to high school sports. Thanks Rose. Today we've got sunny skies with a high of 72 degrees and winds between 5 and 10 miles per hour. Tonight we'll have calm winds and mostly clear skies with lows in the 40s. Tomorrow will be sunny and warm with highs in the 70s and calm winds around 5 miles per hour. Wednesday night we'll have a 70% chance of precipitation after midnight with a low of 51 degrees. Thursday, we have an 80% chance of rain with temperatures cooling down to a high of 59 degrees. Winds will be around 5 miles per hour. And Thursday night, the showers will continue with a 70% chance of precipitation and lows in the upper 40s. Here's a glimpse of the weather from our northeastern and national radar maps. You can see we've got rain heading our way. Now let's see what's coming up on our community calendar. Tomorrow in New Hampshire, the Danbury Selectman's meeting will be held at 6 p.m. In Hanover, the HOP will present a percussion ensemble at 7 p.m. In Vermont, the Chester Board of Selectmen will meet at 7 p.m. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnnow.com. Now let's report on local high school sports from yesterday. It was a Hartford versus Mill River face-off as both the baseball and softball teams competed. The boys' baseball game showed a test of skill for Hartford and Mill River. The Hurricanes pushed their team as much as possible, but they could not catch up with Mill River, who defeated them 6-3. Hartford will go on to play against Rutland High School on Thursday at Rutland. At the same time, the Hartford Hurricanes girls' softball team played against Mill River. In this game, Hartford demonstrated their teamwork and power and overcame Mill River by a colossal 14-3 win. Hartford will host Leland and Gray on Wednesday for an anticipated softball game. In other sports news, Kearsarge defeated Franklin in baseball. The final score was 6-3. Hanover High School conquered Coe Brown with a final score of 8-3. And lastly in baseball, Newport defeated Hinsdale 